Cancer, hello, Amanda here. Welcome to the Unseen Hands Collective. This is going to be your April shift reading. We're looking at the shape you're shifting out of this month, the shape you're shifting into, and what that shape shift looks and feels like. So Cancer, this is only the tarot portion of your April shift. We also have an astroscope and a guidebook to help you more personally move through this shift energy for this month. So go to unseenhandscollective.com. The link is in the description to check out your full shift. So, um, Cancer, the image that's coming to me for you this month is scraping the burnt stuff off of the bottom of the pot. It's like stuff that's been really caked on there to the point where it almost looks exactly like the pot, you know, it just blends in and here you are just kind of like scraping all that stuff, that vestigial burnt on old stuff out of the bottom of the pot because you're trying to clean it out and clear it out. And that's really interesting given your shape shift here, which is shifting out of the world card and into the seven of wands. And so, it, you know, this could almost like look like the peering into the bottom of the pot with the cycle represented by the world card. You know, the world card talks about endings. It talks about huge chapters closing. And to me, this feels like the transition actually from Pisces into Aries season. Pisces season being the final sign in the zodiac, it is a massive closeout of a, of a year-long cycle and then here we are entering the zodiac new year in Aries fire energy and so there's something here about um, whatever chapters are closing out in your life maybe you are experiencing some endings at this time or just like a sense that things are um, coming full circle in a way that is causing you to want to clear things out okay that's how this world card is coming through to me because something new is wanting to burst on the scene. This particular seven of wands is flying through the air like a warrior, a whole lot of fight in them. Now, let me show you what your shape shift looks and feels like for April. These are the three cards showing me, giving me a glimpse into your shift. And I'm finding these cards really magical because here you are in the sixth of swords flanked by these powerful, raw potential aces. You've got the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Wands surrounding you, and I see them as sort of like hovering in your midst. If you can picture this with me, just a sword and a wand just sort of like hovering over you, and you can't really see either of them because if you look closely at this card, you're pretty focused on whatever emotional experience you're having, like mental, emotional, maybe some turmoil. I mean, we see this person sort of like tossing on the waves in this boat and looking down. You know, when we talk through these cards with my cohorts, Kevin and Kelsey at The Collective, we were really, it almost looked um, like here you are just like stirring that pot, you know, just like focusing in on scrape in that pot and you're not even seeing that these two incredibly powerful potent aces are floating in your midst because you're just down here trying to clear all this old stuff out and it's sort of like the cycle is ending it is clearing out trust that you don't need to hyper focus on doing all of these things to clear it out. It is already happening. And in fact, you hyper focusing on that is narrowing your view to a point where maybe you can't even quite see the potential that's hanging all around you because there's a real need to grab it and go. That's how I'm seeing this. Um, the transition into the seven of wands is like, it's almost like here you are if you were to pop your head up from this experience, you would see those two aces just like hovering and hanging. You'd be like, oh wait, you know? And you'd grab them, bo grab them both and then you'd be off. Here you are in the Seven of Wands, having harnessed those energies and you're flying through the air, full speed ahead. You know, and I'm like dropping cards. It sort of feels like, um, at that point, then you just like drop everything because boom, boom, you got what you need. You have the tools that you need to make this transition out of whatever chapter is ending in your life with a whole lot of fight rather than a whole lot of fuss. That's kind of how these energies are speaking 
through this reading for you this month is like, this is you with a whole lot of fight in Cancer. I know you got it. And here, here's the, the habit that you may find yourself in sometimes that feels more like a whole lot of fuss. And it's sort of like, this is the choice that you have. And you could almost see these aces um, in another light, which is representing that choice. You could choose a whole lot of fuss, which is to me coming through as like mental cycling and, and this cycle of, of worrying and over processing, getting you back into this emotional swirl space that we've been talking about with you, Cancer. If you've been following the tarot readings, um, following the guidebooks, following the astroscopes, we've been talking about this um, emotional swirl cycle that is really easy to get in that has been present and showing up for you to see really clearly because there's a there's a strong choice here this month for you to remember that you don't have to go back into this habit of overthinking which then gets you in your feelings which then makes it swirl and really hard to see get up out of that then like there you are scraping the pot again and it's sort of like you have a different choice you could transition out of this old energy by choosing fire which is action it's direct action you know the the ace of wands is this raw potential to leap into action with a ton of motivation and a ton of ambition harnessing your passion directing your fire and just going for it leaping forward rather than sort of churning rocking on the waves in the waters here with the six of swords so there is a transition that you are making this month and this reading seems to be really empowering you that you have the choice as to how you move forward and that's part of what this world card is here to remind you that you have completed cycles of the past and so if that's talking about mental emotional cycles that sort of get you back swirling in this old pot leave it and choose this fire energy choose to to grab your fire take the reins and let that lead you forward in a completely different energy than i think you have before or at least maybe you haven't felt that kind of fire moving you forward in a long time so this is great. I'm loving this reading, Cancer. I'm excited to dive in now into the extended with other decks and see if we can get more specifics out of this energy for you in April. So uh, if you'd like to view that reading, you can click at the link in the description and you'll find the extended in our shop and also in the monthly memberships. Um, if you'd like a little preview of what that extended is going to get into, stick around and we will preview your extended tarot reading, your astroscope and your guidebook so you can um, get a glimpse of what we're going to get into over on the collective site. So maybe we'll see you over there. All right, Cancer, take care. Develop a relationship with your internal life that is more empowered rather than subject to the currents and waves. Like, I think this is what this reading is talking about. Yeah, judgment on the bottom of the deck. Here's the awakening. Here's the eye-opening thing here. You have been operating your life, perhaps, as if when these waves come through, and it could be emotion, it could be intuition, like however you conceive of this internal experience that you have, um, when it comes through, it totally takes you and you have no control over it and you are completely subject to its, its almighty powers and there's absolutely nothing you can do. And this reading is sort of calling BS on that. It's sort of being like, actually, there's so much you can do. There's so many ways that you can put all of that energy that you are feeling and sensing into the appropriate containers so that you can then like put it somewhere so that you can still live and exist out in the world in a powerful, tangible, palpable way. You don't have to keep getting buried by this water energy.
Basically, Pluto's going to be hanging out at the same degree in Capricorn, which is your opposite sign, and in your seventh house. So that's like a huge magnet. Now, what Pluto is doing in Capricorn at this instant for individuals, now collectively, it's going to be a slightly different thing, only slightly, but for us as individuals, what Pluto is doing is we've already done a lot. We, we've already done the breakdown. Okay, you know shit has broken down. It's shit's broken down. It's been breaking down for years in some aspect of your life. Okay? And more than likely it has to do with partnership. It has to do with relationship because you have Pluto in the seventh house as a cancer.